Hey everybody, this is Scott Graham, Extension Entomologist, uh, Alabama Cooperative Extension Service at Auburn University. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, a newer uh, invasive pest that we have in our soybean fields and that's the red banded stink bug. So this pest is a, a semi-tropical insect. Uh, it normally doesn't overwinter uh, in Alabama, maybe in the some parts of the coast, uh, but generally we get too cold uh, for this pest to, to overwinter. Uh, in, in the state. With, when we have back-to-back -back years of relatively uh, warm winters, uh, this pest can uh, overwinter as far north. We found it this year in Prattville, Alabama. Uh, so we're, we're on the research station here and we've got a, a block of beans that are pretty, pretty heavily infested with red banded steam bugs. So this, this pest is important because it's, um, it's uh, more aggressive than our native stink bugs. If you think of of things like green stink bugs, uh, brown stink bugs, and southern green stink bugs, which can absolutely be a problem in our soybean fields. But this red banded stink bug, uh, it, it does more damage when it feeds. It can potentially feed on uh, beans that are much more mature and cause damage than our native uh, stink bugs. So that really causes an issue for us. Now these, uh, these insects are, are pretty mobile. Uh, when scouting for them, it can be difficult to do because uh, as we're walking through the field with a sweep net or trying to find a good place to stop and, and sample with the drop cloth, they can easily fall off the plant or, or move in front of us, uh, so they, they can be difficult to find. Depending on the growth habit of your beans, uh, in an indeterminate soybean variety where we uh, begin reproductive at the bottom of the plant and move our way up, we'll find uh, early infestations of red banded stink bugs in the lower uh, six to eight, maybe ten inches of the canopy. And that's an issue because it's difficult to get a sweep net down that far and perhaps we're not finding red banded stink bugs just because of our sampling uh, method. So sometimes you have to walk through maybe early in the morning or late in the evening when it's a little bit cooler, just kind of creep through the uh, field and, and look for adults uh, flying around within the uh, canopy. So for control, uh, it's uh, something that we have to be a little bit more aggressive on than our native stink bugs. So for these, we're looking at anywhere from probably about four per 25 sweeps of red banded stink bugs is, is when we're going to want to treat. Uh, we've got a lot of different options. Uh, we really like using tank mixtures of uh, products like acephate or neonicotinoids um, or e even the pyrethroids. If we can tank mix those products together, they tend to give us good control. Now one issue with this is when we start seeing overlay of, of uh, populations where we have adults and immature red banded stink bugs in the field at the same time, uh, we can really run into issues when, when this pest establishes itself in the field. And a lot of times when that happens, it really becomes the dominant stink bug species in the field and we don't see a lot of greens or southern green stink bugs. We're primarily dealing with red banded stink bugs. And one other thought is that, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this red banded stink bug can do a lot of injury on more mature beans. So if we've got good uh, dry down conditions where our, uh, our beans are maturing, they're turning and, and it's, you know, hot and dry, maybe we don't have to spray red, red banded stink bugs later in the season. But if we're in a, a wet period where those pods are staying, or those beans are staying soft, there's potential for red banded stink bugs to continue to do damage really all the way up until harvest. So that's just something to keep in mind with this insect as we uh, kind of try to figure out what it's going to look like for the rest of 2020 and, and uh, future years as we see you know, some, some subtle differences in our uh, weather patterns uh, in the future. So another thing we need to mention about red banded stink bugs is identification. So these uh, stink bugs are green in color. They're gonna be a little bit smaller than our uh, green and southern green stink bugs. Uh, but one way to tell them apart is they have a red band on, the, on their uh, back right at the top of their wings. Now that is not always the dead giveaway. There's also a stink bug called the red-shouldered stink bug, which can look similar and we may see in our fields from time to time. So really the key characteristic of the red banded stink bug flip it over on its back and look at its stomach, it has a short spine uh, sticking from the, uh, the bottom of their, where, their, where their, their legs come out back up towards their mouth. So if, if you flip it over and you look and 
if you're looking in the right spot, you can see it with, uh, with, with your naked eye, but there will be a spine going from its belly back up towards its face. And then also there's a difference in the eggs. So generally when we think about stink bugs, we think of uh, big, big clumps of barrel-shaped eggs on, the, on, on leaves and things like that. Now these red-banded stink bugs, they are still barrel-shaped eggs, but they're, uh, they're gray in color and they're laid in rows of two. So if you see uh, gray eggs that are laid in rows of two with maybe 12 to 15 eggs uh, in a row, that's a, a good idea that you may have red banded stink bug eggs in your field that, that could hatch out in, in coming days.